Spirit of the living God, we only want to hear your voice. We're hanging on every word. Cause when you speak, when you move, when you do what only you can do, it changes us, it changes what we see and what It changes what we see and what we see. Changing everything. Let's sing it with all your Spirit of the living God. Hello. Spirit of
You're a 
my siblings. But then, um, at an early age, I also found out that uh, the father in the family, my father in the family, is not actually my biological father. Uh, my biological father. So uh, that gave me uncomfortability, and as well as, you know, when they buy you things uh, and uh, give it to you, you feel unworthy. Because, you know, I, I felt that time, what I felt that time was that uh, I am not a uh, responsibility of uh, my dad, my dad right now. Amen? But I praise God for his life. So, um, growing up, I have that. Uh, the feeling of unworthiness, the feeling of um, away and different from my siblings. And I also have insecurities of... Uh, um, when I see my siblings say dad, or my friends say dad, or other people call their father's dad without feeling uncomfortable, and uh, I long for that kind of uh, relationship, and I long for that kind of um, uh, re yeah relationship towards my father, towards uh, the father that I have now. And but then, sorry. Um, But then uh, I praise God for calling me and for setting up uh, events like this. So I uh, I grew up in I grew up in Sunday schools, but I encountered God truly when I was 14, I believe, and uh, it is there where I experienced uh, uh, the lightness and um, the peace of God. And uh, since then. I continued to come to church, uh, attend Bible studies, and I believe it is fair where um, God started to heal me. Although it's gradual, it was it, uh, the healing did not happen uh, all at once, but um, healing came, and the evidence was that uh, right now I am actually even more closer to my dad than towards my mom, and uh, we are uh, in. It is in the presence of, because uh, when we were in the Philippines, or sorry, wait one second. It's gonna be, it will become long if I go back there, but um, when, when God um, started to use me here in, in Canada, uh, my dad was also in the ministry, and uh, we, even though at first my, um, my feelings was still away from my dad, or I still don't have that uh, good relationship with my dad, but it's actually because of the ministry when we continue to serve God that developed our relationship as father and daughter. And through that healing, I also came to realize that uh, what matters right now is, uh, or what matters is, is that it's not how it started, but it is, uh, how it will end, how God will accomplish his promise towards me. So it says in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 18. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 18, it says there, I will be a father to you. I will be a father to you and you will be my sons and daughters, says the Lord. So um, God longs uh, for us to call him father and uh, that he wants us or that he desires for each one of us to come to him and i praise god because when i did that healing came and breakthrough in my relationship with my family came no more feeling of unworthiness or feeling of unacceptable or feeling of uh, or counting myself as illegitimate or unworthy to receive love but instead the feeling of being um, acceptable and worthy in the sight of God and in the family came and um, also I became grateful to this family to my to the father the father that is uh, that I have right now because actually the biological father I never I've never met him but I'm so grateful uh, for the life of the my dad right now that God has given me because he's there to discipline, he's there to guide, he's there to provide. And uh, thank God because he did not give up on me. And just like our father in heaven, he is also uh, like that. Amen. So our family is there to discipline us as well as also for our spiritual family. Uh, we have our spiritual family to um, discipline us. And so maybe I can say uh, uh, let's also desire 
for uh, breakthrough in terms of uh, relationship towards our brothers and sisters in mm. church mm. Um, and even to our pastors because when we open up to them problems like this uh, they are there to pray for us amen, amen. so um, praise the Lord I give God glory and praise so the opportunity that um, God has given me to be here for the first time so I always tell the brand I'll cast joke pero <laughs> but yes um um, my life, maybe some of you doesn't know my testimony, but um, maybe some do because I've shared it in uh, 2021 pandemic. So, but I praise the Lord because indeed it's a breakthrough for me in terms of unforgiveness. It's not just for my family, but towards myself. Okay, it all my my healing and deliverance all started when I came here in Canada and it is I didn't choose okay because the thing that happened was I was at church it's my first time coming to Canada I think it's just two months that I was here in Canada and then Pastor Julie came and started talking about inner healing and deliverance I was on the projectionist because I was new and I didn't I feel like I didn't want to involve myself in the women's fellowship and then she started talking about um, inner healing and deliverance and then right through in there God was speaking to me because my heart was filled with unforgiveness because of my family okay um, I grew up not being with them so I was alone with my grandma until before I came here so that's 20 years of my life so I was independent I I didn't um, my family had provided for me but there's a borderline that, okay, you, you, I felt that I was abandoned because parents would think, oh, this is for your future, my child, which is true naman. But in my mind, oh, you left me. You choose to, in my letters, I would always say, you choose to take care of other children, yet you cannot even take care of me, right? That's what's inside my heart. And how it started for me to release forgiveness is when I say, Dad, I hate you. Are you confident or are you courageous enough to say to your parents, Dad, I hate you for leaving me? Okay, and I'm really thankful for the opportunity God had given me to speak for the for the youth, ret youth retreat 2021 because that was the opportunity God had given me because the, the theme was prepare the way. And how are we to prepare the way? It's the purity of the heart. And how can I speak to you when in my heart there's filled with unforgiveness. It's filled with anger. It's filled with just, um, I was tormenting myself. I keep on blaming myself. I'm not beautiful. You know the thought, I'm not beautiful. You're not worthy. You're not yada yada whatever that is but I was like that even sometimes up to now but I thank the Lord because God showed me there's unforgiveness in your heart mm. I went to the washroom that day inner healing and deliverance I was running away from the Lord because I cannot admit to myself that I hate my mom and dad I cannot admit to myself that I have forgiven the person that has molested me I hate the fact that oh um my, my parents love my sister more than I am. You see, it's always the battle of the mind. Mm -hmm. I, keep, I keep tormenting myself that I am not worthy of all of their love. So, I'm a loner po. Okay? So, so then, because of that, God showed me that, oh, Hannah, you have to talk to your parents. And right there, for the whole week, I cried to the Lord, said, Lord, okay, I'm ready to talk to my parents. I'm ready to just pour out everything unto them. But Lord, I pray that you're ready my mom's heart and my dad's heart. And I've been crying. I said, Dad, I hate you because you left me. I felt like you left me because you went abroad. And I know it's for my future, but this is what I think about you. I hate you because... Your, your attention is all on my sister now. So, with that, 
um, there was a time when I wanted my sister dead because of my selfishness. Okay? Because my friends went to go outing and he, my mom would say, oh, can you look after your adding? And I was like, okay. And then when, when all of them went for the outing, I was left alone there and I was, I was looking at my sister and crying. Oh, they're having fun. I'm not having fun until I have to look at my sister, look after my sister. And then I prayed, you should have just, you weren't, you weren't, parang hindi ka na sana pinanganak. That's how, uh, that's how um, selfish I was. That's how angry I was that I wanted my sister dead because I couldn't do the things that I wanted to do, where in fact, I've always prayed, Lord, I want a sister or I want a brother, right? So, parang, you see how it's the battle of the mind, it's our selfishness, it's unforgiveness that is um, chaining us to do the things that we're supposed to be doing. And I thank the Lord for this because I was able to break through the moment I released all of the things inside my heart na, Dad, I hate you, and dad, and dad, and dad, and mom, and mom. And the most painful part there for me is what they thought of me. Have you ever thought of that? I always think about them, oh, they left me. I was abandoned. I was, they don't love me. But my parents said, did you know that you're special because you're the eldest? We've poured out everything for you from the beginning. I didn't thought of that because my heart was filled with pain and unforgiveness. So see, in our life, when we utter words, when we just choose to be broken before the Lord and acknowledge that, okay, Lord, it's enough. Like what Ate Manang Narain said, yes, Manang. Manang Narain said na, we keep running away from the Lord, but God is running after us. Amen. Right? Diba? So with any, when we choose to forgive, when we choose to to just let it, let it go, like what Pastor Ruel said, and let it go, our service for the Lord will always be a priority. Why? Because there's no more pain. There's no more, there's no more that is holding you back from, from moving forward. Diba? How can God use you when you're stuck here? Right? Even if God say, oh, Hannah, go and share the word of God, or Hannah, go and make disciple or go and uh, share the word of God or you know you know what I mean but when you're stuck there you can't really do anything yeah. right but when your heart is pure and when your heart is right before the Lord it's so easy to just worship him it's so easy to just go and follow what he is commanding Amen. so whatever it is that is holding us down even right now and I know that there's a lot even I to myself we're, we're a work in progress like what Mana Carmen said, I'm, I'm just uh, borrowing words. But then, it is a choice for us talaga. It is a choice to surrender. It is a choice to give. It is a choice to forgive. Everything is a choice. So, I just hope and pray that before this ends, we make a choice to be a better person, to be of service for the Lord, to just give everything that we can because life is short. Yes. So, amen. Let, let's not be like Taylor Swift. Lord, hi, it's me. I'm the problem. It's me. Although we're the problem, no one talaga. But then, by the grace of God and the strength that God is giving us, we will be able to break through. Amen. 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 So, let us fasten our seats, right? Because we're going to receive something this afternoon. We need to have a power. And that power is only and can only be given by the Holy Spirit. That's why this afternoon, I would like us to learn empowered by the Holy Spirit. And I'm looking at you and yes, that's good. Because sometimes we cannot rely on our memories. That's why it's good to take notes to what we're going to learn. Amen? Okay. Nobody wants to live here a life that is defeated life. Every one of us, you know, when we watch those, you know, uh, how do you call this type of movie that there's, they have supernatural power? Sci-fi? Sci-fi? Who is your favorite, uh, you know, like uh, superhuman human, uh, character in the movie? Superman? Batman? Who else? 
Of course, we have Jesus, but those on movie that you watch. And the theme of these movies are, they are supernatural, isn't it? That they can go beyond the natural people. Don't you know, guys, that we are created by God to be, a, a, be God created us also as supernatural. And many of us does not know that. And that's why we're going to learn this afternoon about a life being empowered. But first, this power, we cannot get it from, from something else. Or you're having that, you know, concentration to have that, just like hope, uh, who's that? You know, it turns green. Hope. Hope. Or maybe you change your, your costume and you can fly. Those are supernaturals and they are not real. They are unrealistic. Maybe, you know, these movie creators, they can just, you know, uh, make you imagine things. But there is, we are real people serving a real God who can empower us beyond our imagination. And so, let us read Acts chapter 1 verse 8. And this actually our main verse. It says, but you will receive power. Can we say power? Power. When the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses. Let me see if I have to, where's the pointers here? Yeah. Hard to say. You gotta believe in this. That's a good idea. At that time, in Acts chapter 19, the Apostle Paul gets to Ephesus. He can read of Jesus, and then when he started laying hands on them, they got baptized and filled with the Holy Spirit. So he explained further about the Holy Spirit. It's, it's Benny Hinn. How many of you heard of Benny Hinn or watched some of his crusades? Have you ever been to a Benny Hinn crusade? Anyone? Sure. We miss it, you know, since the pandemic and since some years because he would hold, he would gather big crowds. He's one of the contemporary uh, healing evangelists. During the time of my dad, it was Oral Roberts, you know, um, all those older, older evangelists. But Benny Hinn was seen on TV almost every night. This is your day. And his style, you know, the Oral Roberts style, he would lay hands. People would line up, he would sit down in the chair, they would line up and they would all come and be laying hands on. Big tent is put up. But then he, he would fill up all big auditoriums, you know, oval places, big, big crowds. Thousands upon thousands of people would come. They come from uh, different uh, countries, different places. They would come in droves of buses. And what would be his style? There's no time to lay hands on all those people. But God lays hands. When God's people start to worship, he would just continue to worship. And everybody worships. As you enter the room, you can feel feel in the air, in the atmosphere. I want you to expect it. You know what? Expect it. You, you don't just, you don't just hope. You're expecting that God is going to fill you. By the way, how do you do it? You have to start to praise and worship God with all your heart. And there are times that, I mean, if, if you feel like um, um, you just, you don't know what to say, just say hallelujah. And just allow the Lord to. I want, I want you to feel the power and just receive, okay? You don't need to feel like your hands is electrified. You don't need to pray for the people and release the giftings. Okay? Giftings can be released. Do you, do you believe that? Uh, yes. That's why there's also a transference of spirit. Giftings can be released. Be careful of who you go and put your head into <laughs> Oh, they were praying for uh, the spirit of worship, the spirit 
spirit of uh, music, you know, uh, godly music, the spirit of sacrifice, the spirit of dance myself, you know, you know, and I was praying, and then I'm not going to leave. As long as you didn't say amen. <laughs> Just 
you, God. In your mercy, your grace, in all that you are doing, in all that you can do, you will do, God, more in the lives of every one of us, especially all these young adults and all these youths, oh God. By the power of your spirit, nothing is impossible. And all praise and glory belongs to you, God. For you alone are worthy forever. Continue, oh God, to let that hunger for you, God, be in the meat in our hearts. The longing for more of you, God, let it always be there, Father. And that your presence, oh God, will continue, oh God, to manifest in the lives of every one of us. In the name of Jesus, let it not just stop here, Father. Let it go forth. Thank you, Lord. Even beyond this hall. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Go ahead and find our seat.